Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We're starting the lesson, How to Live and Not Die. How to Live and Not Die. And our text scripture is Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And also, we want to keep emphasizing John 10, verses 17 and 18. Jesus said, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. And so Jesus knew that no one could take his life from him. He had authority to lay it down of his own accord and authority to take it up again. And then we see that Jesus gave us his authority. It's not a different authority. It's the same, same authority that he has over death and over the curse and over Satan. In Luke ten nineteen, Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all, all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. And so we see here, Jesus had authority to lay down his life, take it up again. No one could take his life from him. He said he gives us his authority. And then we talked about knowing that God wants you to live a long life. He, God wants you to live until you are fully satisfied. Psalm 91 16, God said, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And then we read scriptures in Psalms, I mean, actually in Proverbs, where your life can be prolonged or lengthened, or your life could be shortened. Proverbs 3, 2, my commands will prolong your life many years. And then also Proverbs 9, 11, through me, your days will be many years will be added to your life. Proverbs 10, 27, the fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. These scriptures prove that the length of your life is not fixed. There is not a fixed day, hour, minute, second for you to drop dead and just say your time has come. No, the length of your life is not fixed. It is adjustable based on your knowledge of God, God's words, God's promises, God's provisions, and keeping his word, being a doer of the word, as we have also gone on to say. And so then you must know, though, that even though God wants you to live long, have a full satisfied life, and as we also mentioned, finish your assignment, complete the good works God provide, pre- prepared in advance for you to do. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There are good works prepared in advance for you to do. God wants you to complete them. Finish the race. Finish the job. In 2 Timothy 4.7, Paul wrote, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Don't die until you're finished. Live long, live until you're satisfied and don't die until you have finished and completed your assignment on earth. The good works prepared in advance for you to do. But just like God wants to give you a long fruitful life and be fully satisfied Satan wants to cut your life short. 
so that you don't finish your race, primarily that's what he's after. He doesn't want you to do the good works God prepared in advance for you to do. He doesn't want you to influence other people in a godly way to serve God, love God, have faith in God, encourage others in God. He doesn't want you to have any influence in the earth. So he can't do anything about whether or not you get saved. He cannot stop you from getting born again. But when you're born again, he just wants to get you off the earth so that you don't influence anybody else. And so his will is to cut short your life so you don't finish your race and finish what God has for you and you don't influence anybody else for God. And so you must know your enemy and be on the alert. First Peter 5, 8, and 9, particularly verse 8. First Peter 5, 8, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The NIV says, be alert. The King James says, be vigilant. The Murdoch translation says, be guarded. The Revised Standard Version says, be watchful. Actually, they say, be sober, be vigilant. Be sober, be guarded. Be sober, be watchful. So, what does that mean? Be on the alert. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be guarded. And be watchful. And so, you must understand that is a, actually a big part of overcoming is knowing your enemy and being alert, vigilant, guarded, and watchful. And that is one of the keys to overcoming death. So how do you overcome death? Well, there's one of them. Be on the alert for your enemy who would like to cut your life short. Be on the alert, be vigilant, be guarded, be watchful. And then we also said it's through the knowledge of God's word, his promises and provisions for you, and God's ways. As we said in Second Peter 1, 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness, that's physical and spiritual, through our knowledge of him. So it's through knowledge of God, his word, his promises, and his ways that you can overcome in life. And Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. And then what else? What second or third? What must you do? Be a doer of the word of God put in practice. So it's not only knowledge of God's word and God's ways, but it is being a doer of of God's ways and putting them in practice daily in your life. And we looked at Luke 6, 46 to 49. And Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? And he said, the one who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a man building his house on the rock. And the man who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who builds his house on the sand. The storm comes and collapses that house. So it is being a doer of the word, putting it into practice every day in your life that helps you to overcome death and sickness and financial lack and marriage problems and children problems and job problems and every storm or trouble that comes in life. And everybody has troubles. Everybody has storms that come to them in life. But if you are doing the word, practicing the word of God in your life, you can stand during the storm and not collapse. You are built on the rock. And then yesterday, I started talking to you about the next key for overcoming death. And that is, don't fear death. 
don't fear death. Number one, don't fear anything. And we talked in the series a few months ago about fear. I actually did about two weeks of programs on fear, victory over fear, freedom from fear. And if you miss those teachings, you can go to my website, Victorious Faith. Dot co and victorious is v i c t o r i o u s it's victorious like being a winner a champion victorious faith f a i t h dot co and go to the radio broadcast archives go back in the archives to that teaching on fear also we have them available on mp3 disc and that is a disc that would play on a computer or an MP3 player. And the newer CD players will also play MP3 disc. And that whole series is available on a disc, for, on an MP3 disc for a donation of any amount. These discs are available for a donation of any amount. And so you can listen to that teaching on fear, get victory over fear, fear, Second Timothy 1 7, God said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear paralyzes. It takes away your power. Fear makes you selfish. It takes away your love for others and makes you selfish. Fear is torment. It takes away your sound mind. First John 4 18, fear has torment. Fear is the atmosphere of hell. So fear is tasting hell on earth. Fear is tasting hell on earth. And Jesus set us free from the fear of death by setting us free from the power of death. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, He too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death. That is the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So Jesus destroyed him who holds the power of death and he freed us from slavery to the fear of death. Of death, we are free from the fear of death because the power of death is destroyed, or Satan is is destroyed, and Jesus overcame death. Revelation one eighteen: I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Jesus holds the keys of death. He destroyed him who holds, who held the power of death. That is the devil. And so the power of death is broken and we are free from the fear of death. The power of death is broken and we are free from the fear of death. Jesus holds the key, the keys of death and Hades. Satan does not hold the keys of death. And as we had read earlier in this lesson, In 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57, where, O death, is your victory? It's gone. But that's the answer. There is none. It's gone. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. And as we've quoted before, Romans 8, 2 For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. We are set free. And verse uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we must not fear death. And then yesterday I began talking to you about tasting death. Tasting death. Jesus tasted death for us. Jesus tasted death for us. Hebrews 2, 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, 
now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. Underline that. He suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. You can underline that. He suffered death so that he might taste death for everyone. Jesus suffered death so that he might taste death for everyone. And then we looked at Matthew 16, 28. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death. Underline that before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Well, when is the son of man coming in his kingdom? Actually, that is the second coming of the Lord. That's the second coming of the Lord when he comes to set up his kingdom on earth and he will rule on earth for a thousand years. Now, he said some here will not taste death before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Jesus didn't come in, did not come in his kingdom in their physical lifetime. Those who were standing there that day, eventually they did what the world called, they died. They, they stopped breathing, but Jesus said they would not taste death. Before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. The son of man coming in his kingdom is the second coming of the Lord. The return of the Lord for the um, setting up of his kingdom on earth. Thousand year millennial reign of Christ. So what did he mean? Some. Well, the some were those who would get born again. By believing on the Lord Jesus as their savior. There would be some standing there who would get born again, receive, believe on the Lord Jesus and be saved. And then when they were saved, they would not taste death. Those who are saved will not taste death. So the sum that it was talk he talked about were those who would be born again. They would not taste death before Jesus comes to set up his kingdom on earth, the millennial reign. Well, then we also looked in John 8, 51, John 8, 51. I tell you the truth. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. He will never see death. So we have the phrase taste death, and then we have the phrase see death. Tasting death and seeing death refer to the five physical senses. So in other words, your physical senses will not taste or see death. You could add the other Senses, it will not feel death, smell death when you ex- experience your own. As we are going to finish talking about, I don't want to jump ahead. Then Jesus said in John 11, John 11, this is after Lazarus had fallen asleep. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said to Martha, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Verse 26. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Then he asked a question. Do you believe this? Let me ask you, this is question, Jesus' question. Let me ask you, do you believe that? Jesus said, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. John eleven twenty six. 26. 
then put that with John 8, 51. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. If you keep his word, you will never see death. If you believe in him, you will never die. Do you believe that? Well, Jesus said it. So how can you not believe? And so what is he talking about? Never see death, never die. If you believe in him, you never die. If you keep his word, you never see death. What does he mean? Because Why is that? Because death for the Christian is not what the world thinks it is. It is not the death that the world thinks of. The death for the Christian is simply the spirit departing the body and the body goes to sleep. The New Testament refers to to the death of a Christian as falling asleep, falling asleep. And in John eleven eleven, talking about Lazarus, Jesus went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. So Lazarus fell asleep and Jesus was going to wake him up. But According to the natural mind and the world thinking, they would say he died. Jesus did not say he died. He said he he fell asleep and he would wake him up. And we see the same phrase actually throughout the New Testament. It refers to the death of a Christian simply as falling asleep again and again. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 Verses 13 through 15. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive and are left till the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. You see right there in three verses, it says it three times, fall asleep, fallen asleep, fallen asleep. So for the Christian, death is only departure from the body. In James 2.26, it says, for as the body without the spirit is dead. So the spirit is the life of the body. The body without the spirit is dead. The spirit is the life of the body. Now, actually, you look up that word dead, and it means simply one that has breathed his last, lifeless, and departed. That's part of the definition of dead. It's not as what they would say, dead as a doornail. No, it is departed. It is departed. So the simply, the, the spirit simply departs from the body. The spirit comes out of the body, leaves the body. And I have heard testimonies of people who have had uh, death experiences and they came back. And they said they didn't feel anything, especially these were Christian testimonies. They didn't feel anything. They just were like they separated from their body and they turned around and they looked down on their body. Their spirit rose out of their body and they turned and they looked down on their body, whether it was on the bed or on a hospital table. They looked on their body. They simply had left their body. It is as simple and as easy as taking off your coat. It's taking off a coat and going, I feel better. They always would say that. They felt so much better after taking off the body. It's like taking off a coat. It's taking off a weight. And they feel so much better. They feel so much lighter and so much freer. They feel light and free. They are free from this body, which holds them down to the ground. It's a weight. 
and they feel free and light. And that is what death is for the Christian, particularly even for the sinner. But I don't want to go into that. The sinner actually has a more terrible experience. But for the Christian, there is no sting of death, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 55, where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. Well, there is no sin because the power of sin is broken. So death has no sting. There is no seeing death. There is no tasting. There is no sting. There is no feeling. It is a release like a bird out of a cage. It is like taking off your coat. It is becoming light and free when you let go of your body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, it's Friday and I want to again invite you if you've enjoyed these radio programs and if they are a blessing to you, then I invite you to be a partner with us, even sowing a one-time seed or becoming a monthly partner into Victorious Faith. You can write to us at P.O. Box 1418 Castle Rock, Colorado 80104. Or go online to my website at victoriousfaith.co and join me again next week. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.